Okay, so um, I have this thing for um, crafted artifacts, right? There's, there's a story of how artists really put all their soul inside their work and it's something that means a lot to me because I'm an artist myself. But th today's video is not about this mask. Today's video is about typography. Hold on, check this out. How does that make you feel? The first one feels like it's coming from someone you love or someone you care about. And the second one feels like something that came out of a horror movie like It or Annabelle or something stupid like that, right? But then they both the exact same words, I will always find you. The exact same colors, red, but yet the vibe is completely different. This is the power of typography. Knowing the right phone to use can change the message and tone of anything you want to do in your design. But then the funny thing is, there's so many fonts out there, right? There, there are millions of fonts out there. How do you know which one is the most appropriate for your design or artwork? So in this video, I'm going to share with you my tip for always choosing the right fonts every single time. Let's get going. Welcome back to the channel guys, like I'm really excited for today's episode. If you're new here, don't forget to subscribe and click the notification button so you can see every time I post a new video. Because from today, I'm going to be posting every single week. Today's video is about typography, right? We're going to talk about one of the most important things in graphic design. You need to know this if you want to become a great communicator. Fonts have their own characteristics and personalities. You need to understand how they behave so it can really help you communicate much better. But then there are millions of fonts, right? How do you know which one to choose? How do you know which font can help you make your design appear more powerful, more playful or childish, more neutral or sometimes even futuristic? The process I go through to help me choose the right font every single time, I call it PAPS, P-A-B-S, Purpose, Audience, Brainstorm and Style. So I'm going to walk you through how they work so you can use it on your design project to help you get the most appropriate fonts for your artwork. Let's start with Purpose. First one is purpose, right? Purpose sort of identifies what the design project is for. Is it a corporate event? Is it a kids party? Is it a logo design project? Is it an animation project? So that sort of sets the stage for you to talk about the audience, right? That's the next thing. Audience talks about who the artwork is for. And no, I'm not talking about the person paying for the artwork. I'm talking about the audience, the people who are going to view the artwork. So if it's a corporate event, the people who are likely to attend the event are the audience. If it's a kids party, the children are your audience. If it's a logo branding project, the brand, the audience of the brand is your audience as well. You need to understand this and you need to consider things like their age, their interest, their demographic, what they like. All these things will give you information on what to do, which you move on to the next stage, which is the brainstorming stage. brainstorming stage is where you come up with all the cool ideas, right? But before you come up with the cool ideas, you need to know what already exists and what other people have done. So for me, I usually head on to places like Pinterest, Behance, or sometimes even Google to just check on things that people are doing. Because I know the purpose and the audience, I know exactly what to look for. So I sort of search on the internet to get inspiration and also to know what already exists so I don't produce a very similar work. So, I, so this will give me a good sense of direction as to where to drive the design project. Then we can move on to the next one, which is style. Now the style is right before you create the magic. This is where you determine the exact mood and feel of the design. So in this stage, you're looking out for certain things that the font should look like, right? Is your font going to be playful? Is it going to be bold or even bolder? Or maybe even super slim? Is the font going to look very cursive? Or is it going to be handwritten? This is where you decide all those things. Then you head over to the font websites, like my favorite is B Fonts and Creative Market, to look for the ones that sort of suit the style that you've identified through the brainstorming session. And then you download them or buy them. You don't have to buy fonts every time. They are thousands of free fonts out there. I'm going to put the link to all the websites I use so you guys can check it out for yourself. The next day you just talk about how the font will feel. So are you going to go for a popular sans serif or serif fonts that can make your design feel more grounded, neutral or even matured? Are you going to look for a very rounded fonts and playful fonts that can make your design look more child friendly? 
or something elaborate and cursive that can make your design appear more feminine or avant-garde. There are a couple of modern day trends that make some designs appear more retro or have this whole lo-fi effect is really coming up these days or sometimes just outlines. All these things are under the style session because you're going to design and identify the look and feel of the project. And that's the last bit. So if you pay attention to the path system, you should know the purpose, what the design is for, the audience, who the design is for, the brainstorming session, the content you're going to gather around your project and the style, that is the look and feel of your project. This should help you come up with a really powerful um, direction in terms of knowing the exact fonts to download for your project. If you want to check out how I've used this system in some of my design works, I'm going to put below in the description some of the links to the works I've done in the past so you can check it out and how it looks like. If you have your own way of doing this, it will be great to share it with other people so you can put it down in the comments so people can also check it out. If you love the video or if you have any feedback or any questions, you can put that also below in the comments and I promise to check it out as soon as possible. That's the end of the video. Thank you guys so much for watching and as usual, wait, am I going to do something next week? I'm not so sure, but next week's video, we are going outdoor to do some photo shoots and come back to edit everything right here on the channel. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you've stayed along to watch this entire video, you guys know how I love you guys who watch till the end. You guys are the real Gs. Thank you so much for watching. I'll catch you guys another time. And as I always do it, see you.